So a few weeks ago I was browsing Fiverr and I decided to search for Trackmania to see if anything would show up. And to my surprise there were a few gigs on the website. There was one about coaching, one about skins and one about map building. And then there was this one. I will hunt a Trackmania RPG map of your choice by Fujavka? Fuja... that guy. I was interested by the title and I decided to click on it. And I found that this guy was willing to set a world record on any Trackmania RPG track for just a few dollars. RPG tracks in Trackmania are very difficult obstacle tracks, usually involving a lot of precise jumps, driving on thin ledges, and so on. The track style has been around for over 10 years, and it has a very high level of competition. But who would spend their money to watch some random guy on Fiverr beat a Trackmania world record? Probably not a lot of people. But for me, this was the perfect opportunity for petty revenge. You see, a few years ago, I myself was one of the best RPG drivers, and I managed to set a few world records. But there was always one Trackmania player that would get in my way. A Norwegian player called Hillis. Me and Hillis had a fierce rivalry, where we both fought to become the best RPG player and to hold the most prestigious world records. This battle lasted for several years. But eventually we both got tired of RPG tracks, and we moved on to doing other things. But after our battle, I sat with the feeling that I probably could have beaten more records, but I didn't want to invest the time into trying the tracks anymore. This fiber gig though was the perfect opportunity for revenge on Hillis. Because instead of having to grind out these tough obstacle tracks myself, I could just pay this guy on fiber to do it for me. The idea of hiring a world record hitman in Trackmania sounds ridiculous. But if he could beat my rival's record, then the banter would be well worth the money spent. So I sent him a message requesting him to beat the world record on the track Temple of Doom. And surprisingly, only a few weeks later, the hitman sent me a message saying target eliminated. And I knew then that this guy was not messing around. Alright, so here we are on Temple of Doom with Fujav class replay. This is what was sent to us by the guy on Fiverr. And very curious to see how this is gonna go because he was able to beat Hillis's 529, which is a very strong time. I myself can only get a 536 when I played this about two years ago. So I have no idea what really to expect here. But yeah, let's get into it and see what our dollars here got us. Here we go. So this is comparing against Hillis's world record. And looks like he gets a bit better start already, just like a smaller, lower jump. That is 3300 ahead in the splits. Now they have to jump into the ring here and then respawn back to the checkpoint. A lot of these older RPG maps have a lot of like respawns in them. And oh, he actually crashed there. So uh, he lost that 0.3 lead he had to Hillis just off the bat. Now they jump up to the left here and they go through this uh, mace looking part. So he lands a bit earlier there, has more speed than Hillis, which will let him catch a little bit. Now they have to go through this tight corridor part and drop down into this part. We see that he goes for the internal camera here, but he has gotten off to an early lead here just by a little bit. It looks like around half a second, maybe a bit less. Yeah, half a second. And now... You drop onto the invisible floor here, then drop down, gather speed, and then go below the invisible floor. A lot of this pathfinding is of course completely found out now, so it's just about executing it as best as you can. Now we have to go over this thin ledge here, tap back and forth, make sure not to fall off. Did that really well, also clean landing here, so already this is a great, great run by he gets a little bit bad speed there. Hillis overtakes across the platform. Also doesn't full speed there, so loses a little bit. But this track is very tricky in the middle part here. Actually, just about dead even on the track point there. But he keeps more speed. Drop downs here. Good transition. He has a second ahead now. So this is a very, very fast one. Now he has to pick up a couple of rings. This is a typical ring room where you have to pick up all checkpoint rings before you can continue. So he gets one there, drifts around here, gets the second one. And he is still 1.2 seconds ahead, about halfway in the map now. Now the quarter pipe jump. This one, you have to aim even though you can't really see it on the other side here. Just wanna barely make it across there. 
And he got that really good. Pick up this checkpoint, build up speed, and now you're going to take that quarter pipe much further to the right. Just wall hit here, fly all the way to the other side, and then drive. Looked very slow there on the landing, yeah, he almost catches up and overtakes. So he is behind now as they go into the next checkpoint. How will he catch this lead that Hillis has in just the last two minutes of the track? What a race this is though, they've been so close the entire time. Oh, and now this part, they have to build up a lot of speed for a bounce. I think this is where he's gonna gain the time. Yeah, he had so much speed here. He flew straight into the checkpoint. That is point seven of a lead now. Just has to try to hold it in the final part. This here is sketchy, this transition. A lot of attempts have died there when I played it. Roof hit to reduce airtime. Small little time saver. And now building up as much speed as possible here, so that you jump as far as possible over these anti-boosters. Maintain the most speed that way. And the lead is shrinking. It was 0.7, now it's only 0.2. So Hillis is, you can maybe hear his engine, just creeping up closer. Very close here. And Fudge releasing here for speed. Not sure if that saves time. And now the final part here, the final tower. Three jumps that you have to do, and you have to land on boosters very early on them to keep enough speed. 0.3 of a lead still. Oh, Hill is getting closer though. He must have just barely gotten it. Let's see here. Last jump. Land early. Oh, that's beautiful. And it is a 528. 92 there. So wow. The man delivered on his promise. Did get the world record here by half a second. With what honestly is a very clean run. He had a couple of small mistakes, and so theoretically maybe he could go a few seconds faster, but overall very impressive. Very, very impressive here. And it does make you wonder, will the Trackmania Hitman industry become a uh, thriving business in coming years? Because this is the first guy I've seen who does this, but maybe if you have some petty Trackmania rivalries like me and Hillis had, uh, it could be a good purchase. It could definitely be a good purchase have someone else beat your rival's records. Honestly, I'm a, I'm a satisfied customer. What more can I say? That's, that's five stars. So yeah, there you have it. The Hitman managed to beat the world record on Temple of Doom by 57 hundredths of a second. But was it worth the money? For the absurdity of the gig and for poking a little fun at my old rival, I'd say it was a well spent 30 euros. But I do feel like I'll also have to go back and defend some of these RPG records myself soon as it is a lot more fun when you break the record yourself than to watch someone else do it. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I'll be back again soon with some more Trekmania documentaries. But until next time, have a good one.